this is The Folksy Friend, and today I'm talking about folktales. In fact, kicking off my uh, folktale Wednesdays, I have to start with my absolute favorite fairy tale that I have loved ever since I was a kid. Not entirely sure why it was my favorite growing up, but here we are. The story of Bluebeard is about a French nobleman who had hair so dark it gleamed blue. He was not particularly attractive, but he was very rich and lived in a castle. And he used this wealth to lure in young women to marry. And I say women plural because he had multiple wives over the span of many years, all of whom had mysteriously disappeared. The fairy tale opens with Bluebeard marrying again. Sometimes it tells us that this is his seventh wife. Sometimes it just says his most recent wife. Nevertheless, we don't know her name. We do know she has a sister named Anne or Anna. So the wife and the sister move into Bluebeard's castle and the wife begins to live a life of luxury. One day, Bluebeard comes to his wife and tells her that he has to go away on a trip. So he gives her the key ring to his castle, keys that open every door in the castle. But he tells her there is one room opened by the smallest key that she must not go into. It is the only place in the castle that no one is allowed. So Bluebeard goes on his trip and after a few days, the wife invites over some friends. They have a nice party, have dinner, and then she gives them a tour of the castle. They come to the little room, but she tells them they must not go there. They press and they want to know why, and she tells them she doesn't know, but they cannot go into the room. Eventually, her guests leave, but that starts the seed of curiosity in the wife. And the longer Bluebeard is away, the more her curiosity grows, until one day she can't stand it anymore, and she goes into the little room. Different variations of the fairy tale give us different versions of what she found there. My version comes from the fairy tale book that I had growing up. And in this version, I think it's probably more PG than the original tale. She finds a list of names and poisons and learns that Bluebeard has killed each of his wives using various poisons. In another version, I think likely more close to the original, she finds the wives themselves, their bodies all hung up around the room and the floor drenched in blood. No matter what she finds, she is startled and she drops the key. It either gets stained by ink or blood, depending on the version, and she grabs it and runs out of the room, remembering to lock it behind her. But there's a problem. The stain on the key from either ink or blood does not come out. No matter what she tries, she cannot get the stain out. But she knows that if she hides the key from Bluebeard, he'll know that she went into the room. So finally, one day he returns and he asks for her keys back. She has to hand them over. He sees the spot and instantly becomes enraged. He knows that she knows the fate of his former wives and he tells her now she must die. But the wife is a fast thinker. She knows that her brothers are due to visit her today. So she just has to buy enough time for them to get there and they will rescue her. So she tells Bluebeard that she just wants to pray one last time with her sister Anne. She and Anne go into her room and lock the door. Time passes and eventually Bluebeard gets angry, tells her that she cannot wait any longer. He breaks into the room, grabs the wife, and just as he's about to land the final blow, her brothers burst into the castle and rescue her. Some stories end there. Other versions say that she then took up ownership of Bluebeard's lands and his money, and she uses that money to arrange marriages for her siblings, and they all live a happy and prosperous life in the castle. And that is the story of Bluebeard. The most widely known version of the story, the one that involves the um, bloodier side, was written down by Charles Perrault and was published in 1697. I say it was written down because he did not come up with the story. As a fairy tale, which is part of folk tales, these are stories that come from an oral tradition. These stories were passed down through the generations all throughout different parts of the world. 
Charles was only the first person that we know of to put the story in writing. And as I said, different versions of this story exist all over the world. For example, in Estonia, they have a story about a man who almost kills his 12th wife after she finds a secret room, but she is then saved by her friend, who is a goose herder. The Brothers Grimm have their own version of the story, where three sisters marry a man in succession. The third sister is only saved when her brothers come to kill the man. Similar stories, similar messages. We can also think of the themes of Bluebeard and how closely they are related to gender. At the time it was written down, 17th century, this story was undoubtedly a cautionary tale for women, warning them to obey their husbands or risk harm. But I think it's safe to say that modern women would be much more interested in learning that their husband is a murderer rather than keeping quiet and following his orders in hopes of not rocking the boat. We can also think of how this cautionary kind of aspect to the story relates to other famous stories of curious women who bring disaster down on those around them. Think Pandora and Eve. In each case, the woman is offered some sort of temptation. The box, the apple, the key, and each time she succumbs. This video is not going to be an in-depth look at the um, about the psychology or philosophy of gender relations, so... I'll just leave it up to you to think about. Why would a man give a woman something that he knows is dangerous in the first place? The story of Bluebeard has inspired books, poems, television, movies, and plays, not to mention how many times it's referenced in different work. Just to name a few examples of Bluebeard being referenced in things you might know, we have The Shining, Fifty Shades of Grey, Hannibal, You, Succession, and even the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney. The takeaway from this story is to beware of temptation and to not let curiosity overwhelm your own self-interest and your safety. Would you have opened the room if you were in the wife's place? I think I would have, honestly. I think that curiosity probably would have gotten the better of me. But tell me what you think and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for spending some time with me here today and I'll see you next week. Thank you.